So you all started with this little pond that was already in place when we bought the property and there was a few residents. Um, and I desperately wanted to save this little chag here that had been taken by a seagull. So I started doing lots of research and research after research. I decided after four years to build a big pond. So here I was dismantling what was in our garden, building another fence. And the day started, day one. It was a matter of removing whatever was there, slabs, rocks, you name it. And then on day two, it was clear. I had to build the foundations and then start carrying over all the, uh, the sleepers and the digging. And more digging. So by day 11, I did quite well because I was already, uh, I had already finished dig digging um, and I had to put some bamboo root control system uh, to be able to uh, protect any roots that could potentially come across. And then the rebar, oh my God, the rebar, first injury with a tennis elbow, 25 rebars. And here you can see me Sewing the sleepers after I decided to make the, bead, the, the, the window bigger. So here I laid the sand to uh, level the, uh, the ground and the painting started. And I'm quite chuffed about what I've done there. I painted everything before I installed it. So the pergola started um, and then the opening for the window as well, as well as the insulation. The underlay happened on day 22, followed by the liner, box weld liner. And then, as you can see, I'm, I am pump fed, therefore, I was putting a retrofit bottom drain. And by day 25, I was starting the roof. That was heavy. It doesn't look it, but trust me, it was heavy. By day 26 the roof was fully built and I was preparing, I was just about to install the window. I couldn't choose a better day, it was so windy. <laughs> window was in place, I let it dry for six days, which gave me a rest, <laughs> to be fair. And then I start filling the pond. So obviously because of the lack of space and because having my ear chewed off by Rachel <laughs> because of the mess I decided to move the fish immediately and put some uh, temporary filtration. But they were happy. There was no leaks. Overall everything went well. And then my ear was being chewed off again by Rachel because of the mess in our conservatory and in our garage and in the garden. <laughs> it was just endless mess. So this was my previous pond where I was going to put the filter house. So it was a matter of dismantling that. I started the work on the uh, shed, on the filter house. It is a hard work. What I need is Lee Hartfield to come and help me or just for Koi to come and help me. That would help. My knees are like 
enough enough is enough but here we go so I've just uh, put the post in place today's a bit of a work day the only thing I said compared to a pond is probably nothing and yet this is the bit that I found the most difficult I don't know why to be able to do the roof support on the top I had some uh, C24 so talk about how hard wood not by hand I've cut it lengthway done it but sometimes it's like a one of those days um, I'm loving it I'm just it's hard work and the further you go along the harder it becomes and the longer the recovery is all along I've been cutting things by hand and finally the roof for the filter house was done and that was major for me it gave me a boost to carry on Pipework was installed for the easy pod and at the same time I was preparing and finishing the the size of the uh, of the filter house knowing that the electrician was going to come around and uh, and do the electric for me and here we are electric all done so I could proper carry on and then a ma massive gift from Martin from Dev Koi Pond the plaques for my uh, for my pond after Steve from Cat and Die named my channel. Hate it. There are jobs that I hate. I did say I would not do it again. I hate. It. Digging and slab work. I really hate it. I've got another ton of, of earth to move. Does my head in. Hate it. Have I told you that I hate it? <laughs> so after all this drama with the slabs, I finally built my uh, moving bed and you can see me um, testing it there. And then I thought that I would reinforce the, uh, the roof. I wasn't entirely happy with it. And I decided to uh, to reinforce as well by adding some uh, lateral bars, lateral beams. And then the first drama, a fox took my big matsukawa beki that I uh, that I've just bought at the uh, New Forest Koi. She was stunning. And she had grown so well, I was so happy with her. So I was absolutely gutted. And you can see me her there when I bought it, put her in a bond. So I needed four days to recover from that. And then I decided to uh, start the work again. So you can see me there doing the, uh, the bug filters. And that was nice for me to be able to see the pond sort of finished. To my liking. And then here I am carrying on with the building again. Doing the, the doors for the filter house. So 
So I decided to do double doors for the for the field house. One that would allow me to go in and out, but one that would allow me this little door there to just open when I clean the filters. And then end of uh, autumn, it was time already to prepare for the winter and put some insulation at the front because the pond is fully enclosed on the sides and on the uh, and at the back. And then here I increased my shower and then decided to put the protein schema that you've seen me do a few weeks ago. So the pond building is not just about building it, it's about the residents, it's about them. Those beauties that you put in your pond. And my big Kujaku, almost three years old now. And I was super happy with all the work that I had done and the water quality and the water clarity and and then came along the uh, the visit to the koi dealers so here at the new forest followed by Cutterbrook koi farm and two hours of magical time with uh, spent with Mark and then the growing show at Adam and Amanda Bayer and meeting everybody and some good friendships there being built along the way. That day was just a magical day. And of course, meeting Marek, oh, my mentor, amazing man. <laughs> of course, we couldn't help it, but being a little bit stupid, a little bit childish. And then we had a private tour of the farm with Amanda. That was superb. And of course, I couldn't come back home without adding another chag to the pond. <laughs> And of course, we had the Queenie Koi visit with my partner in crime, Jeff, from Just For Koi. That was a superb time as well. It was the first time I was meeting Jeff. And here is Mike. We just got on like a house on fire. It was just brilliant. And then visit to my Koi dealer koi hut in the heavens and then a visit to BJ's koi in Bournemouth and then Gatwick koi where I purchased my last fish which I need to go and pick up very very soon and of course the show the shows this is the National Koi Show in Coventry. Great time with Rasta Koi and then meeting everybody as usual. Great time, just fabulous time. And I highly recommend going to shows, amazing. You will see some beauties, meet some fantastic people, co-tubers or non-co-tubers. And it was fabulous as well to meet so many uh, subscribers as well. That was amazing. Both shows, so this is the All England show in Kent. Where I get we uh, where again we met with uh, so many people and 
<laughs> magic times. And of course, another little chug. But basically, when you build a pond, we are electrician, we are plumbers, we are water keepers, we are uh, lab technician, we all microscope and all our little um, test kit, water test kit. We are builders, we are carpenters. <laughs> it's just mad. <laughs>